Hi folks, my name's Dick Coughlin and this was not a video that I planned on making but every now and again life just throws some shit your way and you just need to stop everything and get that shit off your chest and this particular pile of shit comes in the form of a guy called Dave Rubin. Now I'm going to assume that if you're watching this you know who Dave Rubin is because I don't want to have to explain it. If you don't know who Dave Rubin is then do yourself a favour, take this, it's a prescription not just advice, turn around, walk away and pretend you never fucking heard that name because Christ knows I wish I fucking could. As I'm sure you're aware, last week Dave Rubin released a book. Now my initial reaction to this was one of sadness because I thought just think there's trees out there that have sacrificed their lives so that they can be turned into pages into Dave Rubin in Dave Rubin's fucking book. I say book I should really call it a soul so-called book. Calling this a book is an insult to the art of writing and to all of the great writers throughout the history of humankind. It's pages with fucking words on it. The similarity between that and a book fucking ends there. But I guess that kind of, to call this a book and to call Dave Rubin an author, it's kind of in keeping with Dave Rubin's life because this is a man who laughably still refers to and is still referred to by some people as a stand-up comedian. Right? He isn't. He isn't a stand-up comedian. He isn't a comedian, full stop. To call him so, you know, it, and nobody should even dignify it by calling him a failed fucking comedian. That would imply that that's what he was doing in the fucking first place. But more on that later. Now, if there's one thing that I fucking cannot stand more than anything among, you know, in anyone, regardless of their political views, it's people who have this overinflated sense of self-importance. And nowhere is that more evident than on the first on the fucking title of Dave Rubin's book, which, you know, he has called this fucking pile of shit. Don't burn this book. Maybe it's just me. I cannot begin. I'm someone who's got quite an ego, quite, you know, I'm someone who's quite full of himself at times. And, you know, but even I cannot, quite, cannot begin to comprehend the vastness, the vast amount of arrogance and the, 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 the hugeness of an ego one has to have in order to give yourself, unironically, to call a book, you know, give it that title. Don't burn this book. Now last week during a live stream I was asked uh, by the people who were there reading it, I was asked would I consider reading Dave Rubin's book and then doing like some sort of response to it. Now my initial response was no for several reasons. One I didn't want to have to buy a copy of Dave Rubin's book that would mean that I you know you know regardless of what I'm doing that would mean I'm giving him money. I don't want to give a single penny of my fucking of the little money I have to, you know, I don't want any of it going to funding or fueling his career or his lifestyle. But also, the other reason was, is I can think of many, many things I would rather do with my free time, which is, which is, you know, including, but not limited to, spending my time in, you know, spending my time locked in a darkened room, removing my testicles with the wrong end of a fucking wooden cooking spoon. But then, but then what happened was I thought about it and I did say, I said to my audience, well, however, if any of you or if someone could find a like free a, a website that was off that was that had a download like a PDF document download of his book that I could fucking get for free, then maybe then okay. Within minutes, several people in the chat were posting links to websites they had found, and before I knew it, I had myself a free copy of Dave Rubin's book. Don't burn this book. You know, a title which does kind of lose all meaning, in all fairness, Dave, if you're going to offer it uh, available as an e-book. Unless, of course, you're suggesting this, because no, no book, I can imagine, is so controversial, is, is so is so groundbreakingly taboo-busting that, you know, that people would start setting fire to their Amazon Kindles or iPads. J just, just a thought there, you know. Now, obviously, I'm going to be coming from a place where I already hated Dave Rubin, and you might be someone who's a fan of Dave Rubin, and that's fine. It's not my fault your mother fucking drank varnish when she was pregnant with you, but that's not your fault, okay? Right? But the fact of the matter is, let's start with the fact that this is a book that Dave Rubin announced that he was going to start writing several years ago. So he's had several years to work on this. This is his big 
tome. This is his big political statement. And what has he come up with? What has he produced in that time? 256 pages. Right. 256 fucking pages. But that's only if you get the actual paper copy. right? The, if you get the hardback paper copy that's actual real IRL paper. If you get that one. If you get the fucking PDF document that I've got, it's got 189 pages. But it hasn't even got that. Because that 189 pages includes the fucking front cover, the contents page, the fucking publisher's bits and pieces. You know, fucking quote. It even includes the dedications page which Dave Rubin, for some reason, has just put for Ben Affleck in. Again, the ego of the man. He thinks that Ben Affleck... Do you, I don't even know if Ben Affleck... You know, I'm pretty sure when Ben Affleck hears, or is, if Ben Affleck has heard, that did you know that you've been... You know, but Dave Rubin... Right, he's you know he's gonna he's, he's dedicate he's sarcastically throwing shade your way, Ben, by dedicating his book to you. Ben Affleck's response was probably, "Who in the name of Satan's portion is fucking Dave Rubin?" To which the person who told Ben Affleck about that was, "Fucked if I know, man. Yeah, that's great. Let's carry on with our lives, shall we?" And the amazing thing is, even at less than a hundred and eighty nine pages, which I can plow through in a good. Two shits would fucking get that, get, would be able to get me through that, right? Even then, this is still a book that is fucking mostly padding. And then let's not forget the fucking page that's called Praise for Dave Rubin. Now, with all these quotes from people sort of bigging him up, including people like uh, Ben Shapiro, you know, Ben Shapiro, you know, the same guy who said to Dave Rubin's face, on a live interview that, you know, that he likes Dave, but he finds his sexu homosexuality to be disgusting and sinful and abomination against God. So he would never want to hang around with or go to a, go to his fucking partner's wedding or even go and have dinner with him. Right. Particularly if his kids are around. That's a guy who you fucking gave credit to. He's got a quote from Larry King. I wonder what Larry King thinks now after his recent fucking bit slapping Dave around. Right. Uh, this got one from Peter Thiel, who is a guy who fucking used to, uh, owns PayPal and that. He's, and then he's got one from Tucker Carlson that says, Dave Rubin is one of the bravest and smartest people I know. Which sounds good until you realise it's Tucker Carlson. He probably doesn't know that many people. But the quote that's amazing, the, 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 ama the quote that he's most proud of, and you know this because it's at the top of the front cover, it's above the title of the book, is from Jordan Peterson, which says, Dave Rubin is topical, engaging, personable, and above all, reassuring. Wow! Fucking reassuring and personable. Well, I can't fucking wait to read this book. This must be... Can you imagine how outrageous and fucking shocking and controversial this book is going to be? Don't burn this book. It's very reassuring. That's not the fucking... How do you... How can you not fucking... The Rock was called the most electrifying man in sports entertainment. It wouldn't have fucking been the same if he called... I'm the most polite and reassuring man in sports entertainment. It would it work, would it? Who wants to read a book? What kind of book that is supposed to be so controversial that you're going to want to resist the urge to burn it is, you know, do you sell on the basis that the man who wrote it is very personable and polite and reassuring? You cunt. Now, at this point, I do need to make it clear. I still, at the time of recording this, have not actually read the entire book yet. In fact, I'm going to be straight with you. I'm going to keep it 100. I am barely into double figure page numbers at this stage, right? I'm barely, I think I'm on like page 11 or 12. In fact, the point I have stopped reading and the point I have, because I haven't gone any further, is, is sentence two, chapter two. That is the point that I stopped reading. In fact, it was a, it's been almost a week since I fucking stopped reading it. I was going to fucking just explode because I was so full of fucking energy after reading that. I thought, no, if I, fucking, I need to calm down and relax. So I went for a walk, right? And, I, and I, I just went for a long walk just to chill myself out. And I came back, looked at my fucking app, which, kept, which I have a step counter on my app. And I had done nearly 22,000 steps. To put that in perspective, that's nearly 12 miles. I just walked 12 miles based not that's nearly half a marathon on what fueled by nothing but hatred for, and fucking loathing for Dave fucking Rubin. This fucking 
this drippy little IRL Terence and Philip looking fucking coconut headed fucking fart box face shit bag. Now the reason I stopped reading at this point is because I could not believe what I read in that second sentence of chapter two. I read, I was, I was gobsmacked. Like the very idea that this, these words, Dave Rubin wrote these words down on purpose. And then after having spent several years on this, thought, yeah, that's, that's fine. That'll do. And then sent them off to be published, right, by a publisher and then to actually charge money. To charge people money to buy this so they could read this fucking sentence, right? And you're probably sitting there, well, doesn't this kind of, aren't you kind of making Dave's point? Because you're admitting, yes, I admit it, Dave Rubin wrote something. It took less than two, two chapters before Dave Rubin wrote something that shocked me, offended me, and disgusted and appalled me. You know, so much that I simply could not continue to read it. And until I get this off my chest, I can't, right? I'm going to tell you, I'm going to read the first two sentences of chapter two, right? So just brace yourselves, okay? Just brace yourselves, folks, right? Take a, strap, strap yourselves in. This first sentence, they say that the first step to recovery is admitting there's a problem. Is that what Jordan Peterson told you? Sentence two, this therapist believe is crucial because denial ain't just a river in Egypt. Denial ain't just a river in Egypt. Seriously? Denial ain't just a river in Egypt. Now, folks, I can handle reading books and manifestos that are full of shitty, bad politics. I've read Mein Kampf. I've read Anders Breivik's manifesto. And even that cunt gave it away, got 1,500 pages knocked out, and he didn't have the gall to charge you for it. I can, ha But I can handle those manifestos. Do you know why? Because at no point did Breivik or, or Hitler claim to be comedians, and they didn't feel the need to fucking try to be funny and scatter, chuck a few gags in to lighten the mood up slightly. But Dave Rubin is someone who is, and he wrote, this is a guy who claims to still be a comedian, who has, this is a guy who is still referred to as a comedian, and he writes the words, denial ain't just a fucking river in Egypt. Now, if you're, now, you might not be aware of this, because I saw some people, when I mentioned this, who weren't, and I realise I'm a bit, I'm, I'm coming from the perspective of someone who is a bit of an encyclopedia, who's a bit of a fucking, you know, you know a bit of an encyclopedia when it comes to fucking certain and jokes right this joke is one of the oldest fucking jokes in the history of a, this is our this is the only joke that i can think of that is older than this is why did the chicken cross the road and it ain't far fucking off this is a joke that this is yeah this joke is not even as old if someone if i wrote if someone wrote a book and that you claim to be a comedian and at one point they did the take my wife please joke that joke is younger than this fucking joke this joke is so fucking old it, it's probably one of dave rubin's fucking audience members when he does his shitty fucking program on the blaze this joke, the the the, of the the earliest, it's one of these jokes. It's I can't even accuse him of plagiarism, right? Because this is one of those jokes that's so fucking old, right? That that nobody knows who the fuck originally told it. But the earliest fucking known telling of this joke was in a fucking local paper in America in 1931. That's 89 years ago. 89 years. This is a guy who fucking sits there. Ruben likes to sit there and talk about how the left are destroying comedy. 
and you're there doing denial is a fucking river in Egypt? I've read lots of political, you know, books by political satirists in my time, and if if what one of them, it doesn't matter how big a fan I was, if it was Mark Thomas, right, if it was anybody. If one, if, if, you know, if, if Stuart Lee did a fucking joke, like, you know, Stuart Lee would fucking turn this into something, something else. But Dave Rubin's, that's the best he could do. You have the gall to sit there and criticise anybody. Once I remember you fucking tweeting, do you remember when comedians used to be funny? Really? Apparently 1931 was the last time. Now... You might hear some people say that Dave Rubin is not a very good stand-up comedian, and I would like to differ, because I've seen Dave Rubin standing up. When it comes to the stand-up part of that fucking job, he's one of the best in the game, my friend. Oh, I've seen him on his feet, sometimes even walking around, and I suppose it's a bit much for him to fucking expect him to come up with some original fucking material for this book that he has spent years writing. I suppose he couldn't have a chapter just walking around saying, so who here is gay? Are you gay? Are you gay? Are you anyone here gay? Who is gay? Give me a cheer if you're gay. That would have been... But then if he did that, at least that would have been self-deprecating and kind of vaguely fucking amusing. Using. But instead he didn't. If I read, if, if I read, bought any comedian's book and, and that, a comedian who I like, if you're a Dave, this should be something that pisses off Dave Rubin fans. The fact that he fucking thinks that little of you. He's going to put a joke in it that's nearly 90 years fucking old and you're going to fucking just take it and say, yeah, that's good. That's a book. This is a book people are going to burn. You think people are going to burn a book that's got material in it that, pre, that predates most fucking forms of it? It's pre decimalization. Jesus Christ, the fucking Nazis weren't even in power yet. I, you know, that's how fucking old this is. The idea. And, and I shouldn't be surprised, but it's just the idea that this is a guy who fucking thinks, he thought that, he thinks that's good. He thinks that that is fucking, that is, that is good material. He can't even be bothered to steal fucking jokes from some, you know, he can't even be bothered to get someone to fucking think, think of anything else. He couldn't, he couldn't even find another joke that he could buy off someone in the years of writing this. And yes, I'm going to try and get through the rest of it. But this is where we're at already. Denial is a river in Egypt. You should be ashamed of yourself. And the fact that you're trying to equate bad reviews, as you said on Twitter, with literal book burning. He's an author who doesn't know what the word literally means. If I ever see it, I'm not going to burn this book. If I ever fucking see you, I'm going to kick you in the fucking bollocks. At least then you'll be reminded that you've got a pair. I'm going to tear you so many fucking new arseholes, you won't find enough gays in California to fill them. This is pathetic. And anyone who defends this crap, you're even worse. I feel sorry for you. Just had to get that off my chest. Anyway, um, Dick Coughlin, um, support me on Patreon. See you later, bye.